Hello, and welcome to Circuit Breaker Live, the Verge's gadget show on YouTube. That's the platform you're watching. This is the show you're watching. You found it. <laughs> I'm Neli. That's Paul Miller. Hello. And we've Sarah Dietschy's here. Look at What's that. up, guys? We Happy actually to be here. have a huge show today. Sarah's going to talk to us about vlogging gear. Mm -hmm. You just buy one of these cameras, instantly you're a successful so vlogger. Much gear. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, our senior features editor, Michael Zlenko, is going to talk to us about minimalist cell phones, which is a wild trend that's going on. Mm -hmm. Ashley's going to join us. We'll talk about more smart gardening tech. It's spring. Regardless of the snow in New York. It feel like spring. I'm trying to usher in that I'm going to wear short sleeves. Yeah. Optimism. It's going to happen. You're going to grow some basil today, Paul. Uh, and then Jake is going to do Ask Circle Breaker. He's got a ton of questions about the new iPad, so we're going to answer all of those. But let's start. Sarah, you're here. Welcome to Circle Breaker. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you. It's great like to be here. a real YouTuber. I, I'm real. Yeah. I know. I don't just live in YouTube. <laughs> Not but these, like, fake YouTubers. I know, right? We're talking gear. We're talking gear. So much cameras. So this is a true thing. Every, like, teenager I know wants to grow up to be a vlogger. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to grow up to be a vlogger. Yeah, that also be. <laughs> this writing's for the birds. Um, and I feel like it's pretty easy to start. You just start with a phone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are doing that. Mm -hmm. Super easy. It's like one of my favorite things about technology. It's one of my favorite things about your channel. Accessible. Right? Like technology helps mm -hmm. you make things. That's great. Mm -hmm. But everybody wants to know what to upgrade, what gear to get. Mm -hmm. So what's the first upgrade? If you what's are the next step? an aspiring vlogger, you've made some videos with your phone, you're mm -hmm. feeling it, what's the first step? So I would say go for the point and shoot. So yeah. this is going to be in the price range of 700 to 1,000. Um, the one that I use all the time, I started with the Mark III, I now have the Mark V, is the Sony RX100. So this is a point and shoot, you can fit it in your pocket, um, but it packs a lot of punch. So the price tag is $1,000, but you can shoot slow motion. So mm -hmm. you can actually go up to 960 frames um, per second in high frame rate. What do you shoot? In 900. Oh, so you can get that slow-mo New York City people walking vibes, you know. Mm. But I would say it doesn't look the best. So oh. you need to stay in about 240 or 480 to get footage that is usable. Of course, you need a lot of light. Right. Um, but you can shoot at 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, and full 1080. Yeah. Um, that high frame rate mode, um, it does scale it up. Um, but this can also shoot 4K. Yeah. So, of course, you're getting... 4K in phones now, but you have to think about the sensor size. So this is a one-inch sensor, um, which you're not going to get in any phones out there. So this is get better low light than a phone. Yeah. So when you when you think Sony, think low light. Um, okay. So a similar point and shoot that has the same swivel screen. It's great for vlogging. Would be a Canon G7X. Mm -hmm. But that price is probably like $300 cheaper than an RX100 just because it's not as good in low light. Okay. It doesn't have that great of slow motion. Um, so the Sony RX100 is kind of, you get everything in this tiny compact. There's one thing you don't but there's get. one thing. So when it comes to vlogging, you want good audio. Yes. You can't plug in a microphone into this. So there's no audio um, there's jack. There's no hot shoe or anything on there's this. There's nothing, no. So, but it is cool because you have um, a flash and then you also have a viewfinder. So you have an electronic viewfinder. Um, but yeah, so you do sacrifice a few things. But if you want that audio jack, you can go up to the next line of cameras that A6000, mm -hmm. A6500. Um, so those are kind of in that beginner next step. Do you right? think Sony knew that vlogging, because this camera came out a while ago, like 2012, 2013. Yeah, right? and they've been doing it, yeah, for a while. Yeah, they, they've released a new camera almost every single year from Mark I. Yeah. It's crazy. But they, do you think they knew that vlogging would be a trend when they designed this thing? Like, <gasps> you were telling earlier, if you're waiting for the Mark V, mm -hmm. you got to think they're going to put an audio jack or something right. in the Mark V. And so, yeah, so I mean, this is the Mark V. Who knows when the Mark VI is going to come out? I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. Um, the audio jack thing, I do not think that they're going to put a audio jack in the RX100, like ever. Really? <laughs> Too good? Exactly. Because if they put an audio jack in the RX100, there would be no reason really to buy that like A6500 or to go that one step up. So what you're getting with that next step up is an audio jack, is interchangeable lenses, but it's just, it's those small things 
that will get you to upgrade to that next like $500 yeah. extra. And that is like the story of the camera industry, right? Like 5,000 yes. models, right. and then it's like exactly. which, which Venn diagram of features. Yeah, and the confusing numbers, you know, but that's why we're here. Yeah, that's why you're here. I don't know. <laughs> that's why you're here. All right, so that's the first step. And yes. you, you know, you maybe want to think about an external microphone if mm -hmm. you do that too. What do you, there's like a software piece to this too, right? You mm -hmm. get off your phone, you no longer have your own iPhone, you no longer have iMovie. What software do you recommend people mm -hmm. like start using? So usually it's in between two, mm -hmm. um, Final Cut 10 or Final Cut X um, or Premiere Pro. So those are the big steps up. However, if you have a Mac, everyone has iMovie. I started an iMovie. There's nothing like shameful about iMovie. iMovie is confusing it's, as hell. That's what's it? shameful. Okay, about. okay. Yeah. So forget iMovie. <laughs> but I mean, you can use I it. I like iMovie. I just right, don't, like, right. I, every time I use it, I, I think to myself, this is not teaching me how any other system is going gotcha. to work. Gotcha. Yes, it's not going to translate well if you want to go big. So yeah. you might as well go big or go home. Final Cut X, you buy it one time. So it's like one $200 fee or $300. Mm -hmm. Premiere, you pay monthly, um, but you get that whole suite of products. You yeah. get Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, um, any, any of the products that Adobe makes, you get that for $50 a month. Um, and so Premiere has a lot of things and it has an ecosystem attached to Photoshop and things that I use mm -hmm. that is really helpful. Um, and Final Cut 10, you have to think about the magnetic timeline, some, some of the things that are kind of just quirky about it yeah. that is, it's going to be very weird if you know something before it. Yeah. So if you're mm -hmm. new, you want to pay a one-time Dollar and it's amount, faster if you have a Mac. And it's faster. So if you're on Apple, you're going to export something that would take 15 minutes in Premiere on a Mac and like three minutes on yeah. a Mac. But whereas with Premiere, you could buy a PC. And it will be light. All right, we're not. No, no. GPU. None of this. Apple, none of this. GPU. Okay, so first upgrade. <laughs> Point and shoot, yes. maybe some editing software. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the next upgrade. Yeah, this is so actually your rig. This right? is my rig. So it's it's bigger, right? Um, so you have the Joby Gorilla Pod, which is kind of that tripod that all of these vloggers have. When I'm in my office and kind of doing more tech related stuff, it gets to a point where it's like, let's just use a tripod, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're great. So this is my main setup. It's a Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, this is the new version that if you if you see here, when I turn on my camera, the mic automatically turns on, which is very nice because previously I would record a segment, forget to turn on my mic, and then lose all the audio, which is not good. Um, so yeah, this is my main setup. You know, I shoot in 24 frames per second. And then we were talking about earlier, this is a Verge exclusive, but <laughs> um, something that I like about the Sony is you have a lot of picture profiles. So okay. I shoot in the PP3 profile, which is basically just a flatter profile, but you get more contrast and saturation than in like PP7. Um, and what picture profiles are for people who are unaware is it's a flatter image that lends to a better, a better um, editing experience when you're trying to add color, trying to color grade your image to maybe a certain look that you want. This isn't like shooting raw or anything. No, no. So it's not a heavier process in your computer after, but it's basically saying you have a flatter image that you can then go and add saturation mm -hmm. contrast, add a LUT to your will, um, and make it look how you want to look. Do you like. color correct everything that you put on YouTube? I do, I do. Sometimes it's more heavy, sometimes it's lighter, but because I shoot with a little bit of a flatter profile, the you PP3. have more diversity. That PP3, yeah. you heard it here first, guys. I have to say, one, the chat loves that you're here. Oh, awesome. Christian says Peachy Fam in the house. Peachy Fam. And then there is just a full on Mac versus PC. <laughs> yeah. PC versus Fire Premiere Fire. War yeah. going yeah. on. Uh, one person says iMovie is a trash fire. So, like, <laughs> chat's doing great. So, yeah. when you use this, just like show us, like okay, you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna film something today. Yeah. Pick it up. What do you What are your moves? Yeah. So show, it's show our garbage camera. Yes. Oh, the dad soccer dad camera. Nobody <laughs> calls it a dad camera. That's not true. It's your, you're going to film in your your kids, right? True. Um, so basically, the lens that I the lens is pretty important. So this is a 16 to 35. It's a pretty wide lens. So that means when I turn it around on myself, you know, usually mm -hmm. I have this Joby and I'm like, what's up, guys? I'm a vlogger. This is happening. This is happening right yeah. now. Maybe this might be in a vlog of some sort. Okay. This is going to capture most of my surroundings without you don't it have being a flip out screen. Or so, yeah, I don't. So you have to trust it, yeah. you know. And this is the thing with the Sony, is 
you can trust the autofocus system. I would say if you're looking for a camera with amazing autofocus, and that is number one priority, um, go with the Canon for sure. Um, but Sony, it has good enough autofocus. Mm -hmm. Um, so when it comes to a camera that maybe has more features um, and is more worth it in terms of specs, I would go with the GH5. Um, wow, strong rack. Yes, but I... So let's show people. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This is a okay, Panasonic so, GH5. Yeah, so these are the two I would put next to each other. So you have the Sony a7S II and then you have the GH5. Um, GH5 has a swivel screen, which is clutch so when you're vlogging you turn it around you know we can see each other see oh, hey. <laughs> but then when you do it you're gonna be constantly looking in that swivel yeah. screen you gotta pay attention to the audience you know um, but this so it can shoot up to 180 frames per second mm -hmm. so it does super slow-mo you have the swivel screen you have the different picture profiles and it doesn't have a record limit yeah so when you hit 30 minutes on this it's gonna sh it's gonna shut off you have to hit Sensor it again well, it's technically a photo camera. Uh, so It's like an import tax thing. Yes, right? <laughs> it's, it's an import tax thing. Oh, shit. So they can call this a photography camera and not get an extra video camera tax put on it. Whoa. Crazy. So this, the GH5, um, is technically a video camera. So they can go past that 30-minute record limit. Um, and so there's things like that, but then the autofocus in this. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. So there's a lot of things out there on the internet that are like autofocus fix. If you film in like, you know, 30 frames per second, and you do this thing, it will be fixed. Um, which like is tricks that you for how you use the camera or what you literally uh, put in front of the frame. Uh, tricks for like settings in the camera. Okay. Um, however, that's dependent on the. Are we NTSC here? Is mm -hmm. that US? So it's de dependent on like the PAL system and stuff. So it really doesn't like help for shooting in yeah. 24 frames per second. Um, so it, there's a lot of trade offs. Um, but this is also a micro four thirds sensor. Yeah. So. And this is full frame. And right? this is full frame. So maybe I'm just picky, but when I compared the footage of both of them, instantly you're like, oh, that full frame look. I yeah. missed that full frame look. So. so we have a couple minutes left, but we have mm -hmm. some new Sony cameras here. Yes. So to walk us through the line, because you're saying you're waiting for the A7S III. Three. A7 Correct. III S, but we have the new mm -hmm. versions yeah. of so the threes, and this is so deeply many. confusing to me. Oh, it is so confusing. So let's put these next to each other. So this is the A7R III. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to the R, think photography. So this has almost double the amount of pixels as this. So when you're shooting uncompressed raw on an A7R3, um, you're going to get like an 80 megabyte, almost 100 megabyte file to work with. Um, so photography, A7S II video, but yeah. we're waiting for an A7S III. It might be around the corner, who knows. Yeah. So A7S II video, A7R3, photography and then you have this like awkward yeah i mean this lens is beautiful i mean like look <laughs> at this lens first of all this is this is the 85 um, 1.4 how much is a lens like this, this is a g series oh, man. yeah it's a g series it's probably 2500 i should have looked before but this isn't mine i wish it was mine yeah um, if, if you okay. Sarah came, Sarah, Sarah came on circuit breaker, everybody, demonetizing how, how'd it people. Go, how do you ever how'd it go, go with Sarah? Well, she robbed us. And she, I know. It was great. She she told us about specs, and then she robbed us. And then I robbed the 85. Yeah. Um, so these two are brand new, and but mm -hmm. you you're saying for vlogging, you're waiting either buy this one now if you want to get into it, or mm -hmm. wait for the or wait maybe go with an RX 100. And this last <laughs> one is the A7 III, which is a good middle ground. So it's mm -hmm. not going to be as expensive as the new A7R, um, but the the A7, A6500, those are good metal grounds. Okay. And then lastly, so you've made the big upgrade. You're, you're living in this world. Yes. And you, this is, Sarah actually showed up with this stuff with all these cases and all this tape. Yeah. Because it, managing these cameras is apparently very hard. Yes. And these are very basic things. Maybe it's like old school rule or things that people did. But with an A7S, you're going to go through batteries like that. So mm -hmm. I have 10 to 15 batteries. Um, so it's you want to be able to manage and know what batteries are alive and what are dead. So basically, if I you know number my batteries, 
This is just washi tape, and basically if it's on top, that means it's good to go. And when the battery is dead, I just stick the washi tape on the bottom, and so when it's at the bottom of my bag, I know that this is dead. Do not grab the battery. You already no. showed this to me in rehearsal, so I knew this was coming, but it's still pretty mind-blowing. So. And it's just Because these things burn through batteries, oh, right? Oh, yes, like crazy. Um, so it's just tape, you know? And then these are basically two SD Pelican cases that I use just for SD cards. Um, you only accidentally delete footage once, you know? That's yeah. only a problem that you happen, it happens once and then you try to fix it. So basically I keep all of my full SD cards in one case and all of my empty SD cards in another. Look at that. So, all those so I know, so the full, it's like, don't touch Sarah. Yeah. You what? still need to load this onto the computer. What happened to these? Man. <laughs> Were you chewing on them? Vlogging life is a rough one, guys. Yeah, all right, <laughs> so if you are, a lot of people are asking if they can just start with their phones. It's mm -hmm. actually the most yes. common comment yeah. we've gotten. People are arguing. A lot of people saying phones are fine. Yeah, totally. Just start with your phone. Yeah. I, the Note 8 mm -hmm. I got to play with recently um, has a lot of great, like, slow-mo and stuff. Yeah. And then I, I'm a user of the iPhone 10, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. What's, yeah. A, what's a good upgrade if you just have a phone? If you just want to stick with your phone? I, goodness, in terms of accessories, yeah. maybe? I would say check out um, Moment Lenses. Really? Because they really help take your phone and bring it to that next level because you basically put a case on your phone. Yeah, we had tons of Moment Lenses yeah, on yeah. the show last oh, week. Oh, it's fantastic. You have telephoto, fisheye, wide. I would have 100% guessed you were going to say a microphone. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, Sarah, tell the people where to find you, where to watch your channel. Yes, you can just Google Sarah Peachy, um, but also if you're on the internet, maybe my name's somewhere, you can just find me at youtube.com slash Sarah Dietschy. It's a hard last name, but... It's a, yeah. I, I feel your pain. Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy. What's your last name? It's all. Oh. But you can my first that. name's Neil. I know. Confusing. I know. Let's go to another <laughs> difficult last name. Jake Kasternak is yes. here. He's going to answer all your questions about that new iPad. Take away, Jake. We had a ton of questions about the new iPad last week. It just came out. We just posted our review of it today, but I still wanted to go over some of the most common questions that we got. And the really, really big one was about the screen. We got a ton of questions asking about how it compares to other iPad screens. And the reason this is coming up is because the screen on the iPad Pro is just so good. And the answer is this display is not as good. That's because the iPad is $300 cheaper than the iPad Pro. So what you're missing is the anti-reflective coating, you're missing the high refresh rate, you're missing the wider color gamut, and the one thing that people keep asking about is the uh, air gap. There's gonna be a little tiny bit of a gap between the glass display and the actual LCD itself. And if you're just looking at the screen for the first time, if you're not looking at them side by side, it's still going to be a really nice screen. If you've seen any other iPad, you will know Apple makes very good screens for these tablets. They are one of the best you can get. But if you do put it side by side, it is clear that the iPad Pro still has a way better screen, and that is really the reason to get it. So if you're a designer or somebody who that really matters for, that's still gonna be the way to go. The second question we had um, was, is this iPad gonna be good for gaming? And I think it's gonna be, you know, about as good as any other iPad. I'm not necessarily huge on touchscreen controls, but I think it's fun for like stuff like Hearthstone. Uh, we were just talking about PUBG and Battlegrounds the other day, and you can definitely do this too. The specs are basically the same as the iPhone 7, so if you've used that or any newer iPhone, you know what you're gonna get, should be good. And then our last question, again, just a whole sort of assortment of questions, which is how does this compare to other iPads? We already went over the screen, that's really the big differentiator. It now supports the pencil, so both of them are equal on that level. Really the big other difference is that the iPad Pro has the keyboard connector. And so I would say that unless you're really planning to use this for graphic design or to replace your laptop, that the cheaper iPad is probably gonna have everything that you need. And the thing I would really wanna point out is that you can basically buy two iPads for the price of an iPad Pro. So if you think you'd rather have two, you probably don't need the Pro and the iPad probably has everything that you need since it is already one of the best tablets out there. So that's all for me. We now have a video from Phil who is gonna to try to figure out how to use a Harmony remote. Hi, I consider myself to be a pretty technological person. I've wanted a Harmony remote for a long time. So I think this should be pretty simple. 
I don't really know what this thing does, but I assume this plugs into the TV somehow. I don't think it's a touchscreen because nothing works and it just says myharmony.com. So I'm gonna go to myharmony.com. Alright, welcome to Harmony. It says nothing about how to set this up. I, I'm kind of stuck. Hmm. Oh, I found instructions. I'm just kidding, I found a poster that I ripped. So I have to get my computer, which I don't really want to do. This seems like a lot of setup to just get a remote working. One micro USB cable. I don't know where the micro USB port is on here. Plugged in and nothing's happening. I'm gonna refer back to my poster. I just set up an account for the remote, setup.myharmony, and there's software I have to download. All right. Like 10 minutes deep, and I haven't even gotten this remote off of the whatever splash screen that it's on. This app looks like it's from 1999. Oh man, this is rough. Do you see that? It looks horrible. I just got an email, the first of many. Your remote's ready in four simple steps. I've already done like seven steps. Okay, it's now giving me the option I can drag and drop like 30 different common inputs. I can't even find HDMI, which doesn't make sense to me. All right, uh, it's not set up properly. I don't know what I did wrong. It's probably video eight instead of video nine, but I'm still on the splash screen and I now feel that I've wasted $250. Don't buy this. We're back. By the way, Phil's trying to set up that remote. One of my favorite things of all time. I feels like everything I've ever tried to do with all technology. I know, Paul, you're on the show every week. <laughs> all right, Michael's not goes here. Hello, right. Michael. Michael is our senior features editor. That's right. You recently underwent what sounds like a very painful experiment. You tried to live with one of these minimal cell phones for two weeks. Actually, all of them. All of them. So over the course of two weeks, I played with four phones um, in an effort to kind of disconnect a little bit and try out some minimal devices. And these are real hype right now. These are hype. There's a bit of a movement going on with people kind of disconnecting a little bit with their phones. So um, we got four of pretty minimal devices here and people just kind of like, a little fewer features, can't really text that well, no cameras, that kind of stuff. Were you exploring this life to see if it was for you or to see what the draw was for other people? I think a little bit of both. So I have an iPhone 6, which isn't the newest phone, but it's new enough. But mm. I find it extremely distracting. I find myself like scrolling through my feeds for hours on end. So I was curious to see what it'd be like to play with one of these and maybe uh, spend a little bit less time on my phone. And you loved it, is what I heard. But, well, <laughs> all right, let's start. What do we got? What I didn't things? love it. Um, all right, so this is the Unihertz Jelly. Let's, okay. let's get this going. So this is just an Android phone. I mean, it's extremely tiny. That's the first thing you'll notice about it. Um, it runs Android 7. It has uh, a front-facing and a back-facing camera. The specs on these cameras are not important. But... The specs on these cameras are not important and not that interesting. But what is interesting is that just about... A tiny, it's just a tiny little Android phone. It's just a tiny little Android yes, phone. Thing. Phone for babies. Sorry, I'm just, this is hilarious. Oh, isn't that Slack? Can I open your Snapchat? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm logged in, but you can open it. This is hilarious. Yeah. It's just a little, is it a slider? It doesn't slide. It looks like it slides, <laughs> Yeah. but you will break it if you so try just, to slide it. Wait, what about the keyboard aspect? So the thing is, the problem with this phone is that the keyboard is very, very tiny. I mean, the entire thing is extremely tiny, but actually trying to use this is almost impossible. So like, wow. I have normal size fingers, <laughs> which most people do, um, and it makes everything hellish. <laughs> hellish. Hello. Hellid. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. That's the drawback. I mean, the other drawback is this phone has about four hours of battery life. So um, I ended up having to carry around a battery pack with me, which defeated the whole purpose of having a minimal device. I felt very connected to the battery pack <laughs> while I was using a very disconnected phone. Oh. All right. So, so that's how much is this thing? This thing's 130. OK. Which is pretty cheap. Not right. bad. And then this is like big hype last year. This is big the hype. 3310. That's right. So Nikita re-released this, or they released the version last year. Um, it is almost identical to the original, although it has a bigger screen. By the way, everyone is saying in the chat is saying you should use glide typing on a little. On phone. that, yeah. I think it would be hell. <laughs> I, th I still think it would be hell. So um, you open this up, and it kind of looks like it's updated. It looks like a new phone. Yeah, it's got Facebook. 
It's got Facebook. You think it has Facebook, but you'll actually open it and... Oh, it needs a SIM card. But it opens the web browser. Yeah, it opens a browser and you have to, like, navigating this thing is, like, almost impossible. I tried to log in Facebook for, like, 10 minutes. I finally gave up. Mm. Um, it's really not worth it. And same with the Twitter app. They're not real apps. It's got T9 typing? It's got T9, so you have to kind of, like, brush off your T9 skills, and mine are not good. Yeah. Um, but so if you, you wanted find to... find yourself using more abbreviations. You do, and um, you find yourself making a lot more typos, and your punctuation goes um, down the tubes. But if you want to text less, maybe it's not a good, not, not a bad thing, right? Like, if you're trying to disconnect and be less in conversations, then maybe having T9 is... A good way to go. What about, it's got snake. What about snake? It's got snake. Snake is pretty good still. Oh no. It's Gabe Loft. Oh no. <laughs> it's been dressed this. up. Oh, it's been super dressed up. Oh. What a jam. Yeah. This is too much. This is not what you want from snake. I don't know. This is kind of exactly what I want. I don't want all these graphics. I want I want L C D blocks. Alright, what is this okay. one? Alright, sorry. This one is my favorite one. Sorry. It looks cool. Look at that. So this is um this is the punked MPO one. Punk is a Swiss company. They make a bunch of minimal products. They decided to make a phone. This phone costs um, more than you would expect. This phone costs $230. What? And this phone only does two things. So this phone only, uh, you can only make calls and you can only text. Texting is T9. It has a couple of buttons on the front. Um, this is your kind of, this is your phone book. And this is where you can text. The big problem with this phone is that it breaks up text and it doesn't thread them. So you have an inbox, an outbox, what? drafts sent templates why would you build outlook instead of just threaded texting it's it's actually <laughs> insane Wait, to have this phone in two, can, 2018. Can, i i don't want to embarrass you i just want to help explain t9 for people that oh you want me uh, you yeah. want me to create a message like i'll i'll do it if you want like i, it's I, just... I mean um all right here we go i mean explain t9 here's the here's the other awful part about this phone is that this thing, which is supposed to capitalize the first letter in a sentence and then keep all the ones in lower caps, mm -hmm. doesn't work. So it'll just cap all of them, <laughs> which makes you sound like a lunatic or like you're really angry. Or right? excited about me. Yeah. Um, and then oh. I, that's supposed to be on. Well, we got Anyways, point case. being, point being, I'm not very good at this. Um, well, that's T9. T9 is you push the number multiple times to get yeah. to one of the letters. In yeah. case someone, you know, so we got a young audience. That's true. Yeah. Anyways, this is how. So it's very slow, but it kind of does like help you disconnect. If you want to text last, how much nothing you? costs? Two hundred thirty dollars. Um, and, and it only works. operates on a two G network. And only T Mobile has a two G network. And only T Mobile has a two G network, and they're going to phase out their network within the next two years. So um, if you if you're going to buy it, buy it now. <laughs> Um, Are they going to come out with a 3D, 3G version? This is definitely the world's most expensive burner. Yes. Like, that's yes. all that is. It's okay. so pretty. And it looks pretty good. It's very pretty. It's so it pretty. seems ridiculous. It looks very nice. This is the hypest hype of all. This is the hypest hype. This is the light phone. This is $150. This does exactly one thing, which is make phone calls. So I'm going to turn it on. So this thing is actually really, really cool, although it does hardly anything. All you can do is make phone calls. You can store 10 numbers in it, but you have to save the numbers um, when you connect the phone to your computer. Um, and that's kind of all it does. So you can, you can either tether it to your smartphone or you can have a 2G SIM in here. And um, it's kind of cool. Like, honestly, this looks like the most futuristic thing I've seen in a really long time. Even yeah. though it looks clunky and like basic, there's something extremely... Um, Futuristic about how light it is, how small it is, it's the size yeah. of a business card. Even like the crappiness of this display is like a little bit futuristic. Yeah. Wait, and um, the glowing. I have an idea. Let's just see here. Let's get my Metro card going. Is this going to work? Yeah. I don't know if you want to sit on it. You end up with a real Costanza situation. Try not to show off my credit card. I heard you back. All right. Pretty good. So, yes, you got a phone. <laughs> Hang on, let me uh, make a phone call. Oh, yeah. Pull this out of my <laughs> Wait, how's the audio quality on all these? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. I'll call my phone. I don't want to show the camera. Don't let anybody know. Someone's going to use like, the dial. reflections in your okay. eyeballs. Calling. Calling. Ready? 
Milo. Yo, what's up? Oh, not much. Just hanging out. You sound terrible. You sound great. Like, like this takes... Voice. Here. I do. <laughs> it does have a great voice, everybody. Milo. Uh, yeah. You sound awful. <laughs> I mean, I will say that th this makes this speaker makes your voice sound deep and resonant, but when you talk through it, it takes all of the low end out of your voice. Yeah, this is extremely painful. <laughs> How much is this thing? This thing is 150 bucks. Um, they ship 10,000 units. What's exciting about this is that um, they're releasing a second version, or at least they say they will next year, and you're gonna be able to text on it. It's got um, like an e-ink display now, right? Yeah, the next one's gonna have an e-ink display. They say that it's even gonna have some apps. Um, they're going to have like some navigation stuff in it, some music This is like the thing, it. right? So you start with a super minimal phone, yeah. and then the next version, you got to add features. I view, it, I view it not as minimalism, but that we want to burn everything down and build from the ashes. Build from scratch. Yeah. Well, they said the next one isn't going to have, what they're not going to have is social media or news. Those are the two uh, things that are like, we're definitely not having that. Everything else they're like negotiable on. Maybe. Yeah. So if you if you had to actually use one of these as your only phone for a while, which one would you go with? I would use this one. The smartphone. <laughs> the smartphone. Because <laughs> honestly, um, T9 is a little unbearable. And I do need to text. So th this thing is really cool, but like honestly, nobody's going to pick up my calls. Like nobody picks up calls anymore. So even if you have this and you're like, well, I have a phone in case of emergency, <laughs> nobody's going to pick up your <laughs> call in die. case of an emergency. <laughs> stuck so on it's kind of hopeless. Yeah. You'll die. This thing is cool because it's like, it does minimize the amount of time you spend on it because it's so um, uncomfortable and This is my whole thing. My, on my desktop, I use a bad Twitter client right. because after a while, I'm like, I got to stop using Twitter. It's horrible. Yeah. Right. So it limits my use. It's the keep it small theory. Slightly yeah. crappy so technology. If Fahrenheit, you wanna... yeah. Fahrenheit 451, oh, the God. guy has a small TV instead of the big room-sized TV. Yeah. It's... You went straight to Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, read Fahrenheit it's 451. It's a classic for a reason, people. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I'm sorry that you are required to use this That's tiny okay. phone from now on. <laughs> For the rest of my life. <laughs> All right, Paul. Yeah. I can't stop you from making these videos, man. Nobody can stop what, me. What'd you do? Uh, well, I was so excited that we were going to see Sarah's uh, vlogging setup. I wanted to talk to James, one of our photographers here at The Verge, uh, about his uh, product photography setup. So I shadowed him for a photo shoot. Check it out. Hey, it's your friend Paul Miller. I'm here at the office early Friday morning. It's probably around 7 a.m. Here to check out James Barham's photography process. He does all the photos for the, Ver well, not all the photos. He does some of the cool photos for The Verge. I wanna see how does he get that Verge look. Step one, find James. James. Yes. How's it going? It's going well, Paul. I know it's really early in the morning. It, it, it's half past ten, Paul. But uh, I wanted to see your process. Well, thank you. Welcome to my process. Tip one, have a camera. Have a camera. So shooting on the 5D Mark III okay. uh, with a lovely, love this lens. What is it? 50 millimeter 1.2. So it's a standard lens. 50 millimeter lens is the closest to the focal length of the human eye. Okay. And then tip two... Have some light. Have some light so that you can see. And when you have your light, so subsection of tip two, yeah. have a main light and a fill light. Okay. Tip three, always have access to reflectors, both dark shadow reflectors and bright. We've got white around here if we needed that. Yeah. There are little tricks that you can do, like have... Uh, you have a laptop, I believe. Yes. Most laptops, if they're like silver or bright, you can open them up and they make an awesome reflector. And if you have a coat, you can have a reflector in there and a coat put it the other side and that creates shadow. Just little things moving around, it's all simple. So what we have is we have the, the shadow coming this way is from this light. Uh -huh. And the main light, I love to have all the main light in all of the shots we do or as many as possible when we do still life to come from the top. So it's like the light is coming from your eyeball as a viewer? No, it's like you're sitting in the same light as the subject we're shooting. Because you're, if you're outside, the light is up here, or you're in a room, the lights are in the ceiling, so when you're looking at it, it kind of mimics the lighting around you. If we keep the lighting consistent across different products, if we have a phone and a laptop and a camera that we've all shot, mm. and it's all on theverge.com, great website, check mm. it out. Check it out. Um, 
all of these images are consistent. Okay. They fit. So there's like a context almost. Exactly. We don't shoot things and then cut them out and put them on a color background. We shoot them for real. Real plus, I call it. It's real, but better. He does actually call it real plus. <laughs> I do. That is no lie. Then tip four is make sure you have little bits of gaffer tape or little bits of putty mm. to make things level and stand up. Clean the products, but we don't want to clean it because real plus is we want it to be real. We don't right. want it to look like an ad. Right. We don't want it to look like it's a render. This is real Google Glass. And then uh, tip, where are we up to tip four, I believe? Nobody knows. Always when you're shooting a picture, try and keep the camera level and square. You don't want to be coming in from one angle or mm. another because it distorts things. And then I really like the fiddling aspect. So you basically have your variables, which are the two lights, the reflector, and the shadower. Yes. And then you fiddle with all of those variables. And you balance. And then obviously you get the subject of frame and level yeah. and stuff like that. It's like recording music in a studio. It's it's all about the mix. Mm. You have all of the components and then you it's just It's all mix about it. the mix. It's all about the mix. Thanks, James. Thank you very much, I've Paul. I've learned so much. I've learned so much. I like saying these <laughs> things because I make it up as I go along, kind of. <laughs>
water level and also how moist the soil is. Mm -hmm. You can put it in automatic mode where it's like, it, it can last for a month, they say, so you can take a nice long vacation. Um, right now it's pairing, which we know. Yeah, so exciting. <laughs> this has been a very slow pairing process. I will say live, you called Parrot a drone company, but I've been covering Parrot long enough to know that Parrot will just hop on any yeah. trend. It's like they invented a Bluetooth chip, and they're like, what can we do? Is that really? <laughs> I think that's because they were a Bluetooth uh, headset oh, they company. They did headsets. They did, like, car stereo stuff. We're really just vamping while this thing pairs. Uh, this is, is, this is incredible. Like, like, connection in progress. I mean, this is really slow, so clearly their Bluetooth chip is not great. Well, it's designed for no, drones, I don't think they were <laughs> building all the pieces um, of their Bluetooth but, stack. But I will say that this was originally priced at one uh oh connection Shh. failed classic this has never moment. happened this you is so depressing this, please work you. and there's no way to put in a pairing mode by it's the way to just pair. if you can see this message that's oh, it says, yes, please yes. move closer to your pot it's like how much closer we're here we? we're basically in the pot um so it was originally priced at 150 you can find them online for like 50 bucks now they don't make these anymore okay um, I think I know why <laughs> yeah this is depressing because I really want to show you guys oh this. there we go oh wait it it's Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's like got it and then it's like no nope. man all right, please. let's move on to the next thing all right. and I'll keep trying to this is so this. sad i will tell you this demo like made me laugh and laugh and I laugh know, earlier, so i just I it's it. really exciting okay i'm gonna like move it really all slowly right. maybe <laughs> maybe Gosh, all, right. all right all right bye um so in the past we have talked about this gadget the click and grow I just brought it here for reference because mm. Click and Grow is actually doing, I think, decently well. They're still in business, which is, at this point, a good well, thing. The uh, soil pods. And their way to monetize. So with the pear pot, you could use your own plants. The Eden, it's your own garden, whatever you've wanted. Click and Grow is like, you know what? We're going to monetize by selling you proprietary pods, which is right. why I love them. And this is not actually connected. It's a timer light. Okay. And the app, the idea originally, I think, was to try to teach people how they could garden at home and have their own indoor garden. But unfortunately, their app has been really bad about teaching people. That was one of my big gripes. Hmm. All right. So with all of this in the background, yeah. Neelai's still working on this pair. I'm, I'm going to try to figure it out. We have this massive the thing, monster. the Grow Duo. What is that? So it's from a company called Grow. They're in New York City. This is designed to go outside. You don't need proprietary pods. It's your own seeds. And it has sensors in the bottom. So for the soil, it's measuring the moisture and temperature. And outside, it has a light sensor, a temperature sensor. Um, and you'll see inside, it has this little, it hooks up to your hose, has a little sprinkler system. There's two of them. You can see one Whoa, and two. So when horrible. it detects, then it needs water. The sprinklers automatically turn. So you have your hose everything on. Out about it? What, what, what's your involvement at this point? At this point, you would have to plant the seeds and harvest them, and they give you tasks. So they want you to feel like you're still part of the garden. So like, you should prune they give your basil. You tasks? It's like a, yeah, they're like, like you RPG. should prune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Farmville. Yeah, you're grinding for basil. <laughs> um, oh my God, is it connected? It is. Like? I didn't want to tell you. Oh, this is so exciting. Wait, can we, can, we, can we go back to this? No, finish oh, this, okay. and then we'll end with all this, right, and we'll right, be excited. Fine, fine. Okay. So you can see this in my planter. I earlier planted beets which I have, but okay, so you can see we have the basil in there, there's other herbs. Their big idea, because clearly monetization is huge, they want to also sell people these seed sheets. At least they're not pods. They're this not pods. Amazing. But that's a sheet of seeds. It's a sheet of seeds. So um, in the app, it would show you, but what you would do. Everything is pods. This flies in the face of everything I n thought I knew about seeds. <laughs> you <laughs> would like, you lay this me? in there, put this little sprinkler right through the middle, this will disintegrate. Um, it would ask you to sprinkle a little soil on top, and then it is planted and I can view it. What it'll do and what they really like about this is they suggest to you different vegetables and things that will work in your environment. So it knows you're in New York City, you'll say, hey, it's winter. <laughs> this is kind of your option. Is what this option? beets beets, and basil, essentially. Oh, so these are good to grow during winter. Right, they suggest things that are good for you. I mean, it's early spring, and right. they'll tell you when it's going to be able to harvest. So we just planted uh -huh. these now. It would be ready at the end of April, uh, May. So I can look at my activities here. Oh my God. Here are my activities. Um, I'm actually gonna go with the prune. Yeah, prune and it's going nice. to teach me a little bit about how to prune them. So this is really trying to teach you how to be a farmer. It wants you to feel involved. Right, and then when the apocalypse comes, yeah, you're, you're like, ready. thank God this robot taught me how to farm. Yes. <laughs> Where exactly. are my seed sheets? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to 
cut some basil yeah, because this is yeah. the one skill I did actually learn when I used the click and grow earlier this year. By the way, somebody in the chat said, I see click and grow at all my friends' houses. Seriously? And they're all dried up in the corner. Oh, no. Oh, who is this person? I, right. I want to know them, actually. All right. Okay. I'm going to cut these guys. You always want to leave two basil plants. Maybe I should have picked one closer. Oh, well. I think I'm screwing this up, guys, but you know what? Don't worry about it. It's fine. We got more basil. You can always get another seed sheet. <laughs> All right. I have a cold, so I can't smell anything, but I will let Paul and Eli smell it to certify this is real basil. I feel like basil's the official plant of the Circuit Breaker show. Yeah, we've grown <laughs> a lot of basil. It's our mascot. It smells, like, can we eat it smells really good. You can definitely eat it. I mean, feel you free. It. Is it good? <laughs> yeah. Tastes <laughs> like basil? I'll try it later. It's like a, it's like right, a, a way, very exciting toothpaste. Caleb says, I've seen the click and grow at multiple friends' parents' houses. Oh. And they're dried up in the corner. It's a good Christmas Well, recipe. okay, my parents, I actually got them a click and grow for the holidays. And my dad was so upset that the tomatoes really can't get very high up. Mm -hmm. And they're really small. So he planted them in his own planter, and now they're thriving. So yeah. he took them nice. out of the click and grow. All right, Ashley. All right, this is very exciting. This We're going weird. back to the parent pot, just for a second, because I want to show you like the main thing that we how appreciate. the water system works. So there's a reservoir. God, I if I works. press water... No! <laughs> it's just oh. it's because they're not connected. This is a lie. It's super lied to us. Damn it. Wait, let me try quitting this app. And All right, well. I think when you close dude, the app. Everybody, everybody just use your imagination. <laughs> We're going to get this. Streams of water. Uh, by the way, if you want to know why. Okay. Why this product is no longer on the market. <laughs> okay, well, I will say about the. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, you got it? Water All right, up. ready. Water Here we go. Here we go. Water it. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technology makes everything easy. We, it's we did beautiful. It. It's beautiful. <laughs> we did it, everybody. <laughs> we watered that plant. Okay, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you. All of you, please grow plants. Oh, what are the, what's the price on this? One ninety nine. It's not available until July. It's actually not terrible. No. And it all comes right. with all the seed sheets and things. All right. So here's what I learned on Circuit Breaker today. We're yeah. going to start gardens. Uh-huh. Become vloggers. We're going to vlog about our gardens, Absolutely. and we're going to call our friends on tiny phones. And they won't pick up. <laughs> they won't pick up. And then we'll just go back to gardening. There we go. That's right. Amazing. That was Circuit Breaker, everybody. Uh, if you want to hear more about this, if you want to see more news about what's happening on YouTube, check the site. Again, I hope everybody is okay. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week, 4 p.m. Eastern, at Circuit Breaker Live.